All right, with tensions sky high in the Middle East, we all know from history that one spark can start a flame that will last a generation in war. 23 years ago this month, two suicide bombers pulled up alongside the USS Cole in a small boat as it was making a fuel stop in Yemen. They offered friendly waves and gestures to the crew, and then they detonated their explosives, ripping a 40-foot-wide hole in the hull of the destroyer. 17 U.S. Navy soldiers were killed and nearly 40 injured. The FBI surged 100 agents to Yemen, and by the end of the year, several suspects were either dead or in custody, but that was just the beginning of the war on terror. The spark from that attack on the USS Cole, as well as the Al Qaeda bombings on the US, the Al Qaeda bombings of the U.S. Embassy in Kenya and then in Tanzania, all set in motion a string of events. The most grim of which, of course, was the 9/11 attacks here in New York City less than a year later. The consequences of which Americans and those harboring terrorists have been dealing with now for decades. Kirk Lippold was the commander of the USS Cole on the day of that attack, and he joins us live. Uh, it's really good to have you here, sir. I've just got to get your take on what's going on. Are we on the verge of yet another cycle of terror and war in the Middle East? Uh, good evening, Elizabeth, and thank you for having me on your show. I believe that we are on the cusp, and a lot of this is being driven by one country, and that is Iran. It was very interesting last week on the 23rd anniversary of the attack on my ship. It was kind of like I was feeling the ghosts of the 1990s and the 2000s come back and they're haunting us again. Because while Israel needs to go after Hamas and absolutely destroy its capability to control the Palestinian people in Gaza and to have their kind of horrific attacks that they executed against Israel, at the end of the day, we as a nation and as a world need to stop targeting just the terrorist organizations. We cannot afford to target just Hamas or just Hezbollah. What does that mean? We must go. For, for me, it means that we need to go after the state sponsors. Who has fomented all this? Who has armed those terrorist organizations? And it's Iran. Yeah, but you can't. Are you advocating that we start a war with Iran? I'm not advocating yet a start a war with Iran, but I think we are better have a realization that Iran has started a war with us. Iran has started a war with Israel. They are currently in the process of building up additional proxy forces to the north with Hezbollah. They are building up those forces in Jordan. They are preparing to conduct further attacks. They are going to try and attempt a multi-pronged attack against Israel. And if they do that, Iran will have declared war in the Middle East. And then it is going to be up to the United States in a leadership role with our allies in the region who are going to have to make hard choices about what we're going to do to confront Iran. Initially, why not sanctions? Why not execute all the snapback sanctions that we had in the JCPOA? We know Iran is involved. They've already stopped the $6 billion in the humanitarian aid. Now it's time to begin more proactive role. It doesn't need to be kinetic. We are seeing today um, very chaotic uh, protests in Egypt, chaotic bordering on violent, uh, causing the U.S. Secretary General, who was trying to talk uh, and make an address near the Rafah Gate, where all the aid has been waiting to get in, he had to leave and take cover. And these protests are spreading throughout the Arab world. What are the chances that one of these will, in fact, ignite something bigger? and lead to perhaps violence or attacks on American forces stationed in the Middle East? Well, to a degree, we've already seen that. We had rockets fired into the al-Assad air base in Iraq by Iranian proxy forces already. So they're making attempt to attack us. We're also seeing attacks against our forces that are currently engaged in the fight against ISIS up in Syria. So the attacks are already occurring. What you're really seeing with all these protests is the sophisticated information warfare that Hamas and some of these other terrorist organizations are carrying out against the, the country of Israel and the United States and our ability to secure our national security objectives, not only with Israel, but in the region itself. And they are you, undermining our ability there. And you think that today's tactical release of two American, not Israeli, American hostages is part of that information battle? Oh, absolutely. And I think when you look at it, 
while it is wonderful to have those two hostages released, and thankfully I am so glad for their families this evening, but here's the harsh reality. Why did that actually occur? And Secretary Cohen touched on it just a minute ago. It wasn't because Hamas wants to do right. Where are the leadership for Hamas based? They're in Doha. They are in Qatar. Yeah, Qatar has allowed them to exist there. (laughs) Exactly. And they've allowed them to exist there. So Qatar wants to be seen as, well, we want to support the U.S., but we're going to allow Hamas to continue their leadership to stay in the region where they can recruit, finance, plan, and conduct terrorist operations out of there while they sit pleasantly at the Four Seasons but Hotel. But isn't, isn't that like every many other countries in the Middle East? We give a billion dollars to Egypt. Egypt has helped enforce the blockade on Gaza for 16 years, and Egypt is refusing to let any of those Palestinians in Gaza into Egypt because they don't want the problem. In other words, Absolutely. a lot of these Middle Eastern countries have a lot of dueling agendas at play here. Oh, they are the best at dealing with both of these dueling agendas. And I think the American people are finally beginning to realize. But again, this goes back to the point, even with those dueling agendas, who is the state sponsor that is giving these terrorist organizations the ability to project power? It is Iran. And if we do not start holding that country accountable and squeeze the noose using the tools that are available to us, with sanctions and others, and involve the Europeans with it as well, then we are never going to solve the problem of terrorism. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.